Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, deep into the, uh, you know, the, the prep for both of us, uh, you know, just the, uh, you know, basically, a, you know, a day and a half prep, uh, you know, for each other here. So, uh, you know, I think I said this about Marquette during the season, um, you know, playing certain programs, it's, uh, you know, feels like a, you know, privilege because of, uh, you know, what they stand for, how they do it, and, and you know, how good they are. So, uh, you know, to be able to play the national championship versus Purdue, um, you know, and how good they are and how Matt runs things, uh, it's a real privilege to play them for the championship. Questions for Coach Hurley, Tristan, and Cam. Let's start in the middle of the room with Matt. We're going to use the back left microphone. Dan, good afternoon. Congrats on winning. I'm right here. Congrats on winning uh, National Coach of the Year. Um, I couldn't help but notice you sat down at the dais with a, with a little manila folder. If you could take us into uh, where you are with prep, and is that just a typical scouting report? Genu genuinely curious about uh, where you're at right now. Yeah, so, um, you know, immediately after the game, um, you know, after the media was done, you literally, you know, get that tablet as soon as you get on the bus, and I was into... Uh, you know, you're into you're into Purdue on the, on the way back to the hotel. We were able to, you know, probably you know I was able to consume you know three games uh, before I went to bed last night. Luke Murray uh, obviously was was prepping for the winner uh, of that game. So um, you know, I've been able to you know catch you know six of their games already. I'll imagine I'll watch you know maybe eight, um, and then that's all kind of the the analytics uh, scouting report, uh, some of that type of stuff. We'll go up front on the left side, Fanta. John Fanta, Fox Sports. For Dan and the players, can you guys reflect on, on how great of a matchup this is for, for men's college basketball? This is one versus two throughout this season. Obviously, Donovan versus Zach, but there's so many other pieces to both these teams. Just what it's like knowing that you're going to step on the floor against this Purdue team tomorrow and, and uh, how big this is, how great this is for the sport, that this is how we end what's been a remarkable season. We'll ask Cam to take that first, then Tristan, then Coach. Yeah, I think it's a great matchup you know, between two teams who have had two great years. Um, obviously, you know, we have a lot of respect for them as a program. You know, they're in national championship for a reason. And, you know, I'm sure people have been waiting to see this one for a while. But, you know, we're, we're locked in and we'll be ready to go. Tristan. Uh, yeah, we've been the two best programs the past two years, uh, us and Purdue. And uh, it's a great match that we're looking forward to. It. You know, the coaches are going to, you know, get us well prepared and, and ready to, to have a good game tomorrow. Anything but, to add, Coach? Yeah, I would just say I'm sure that, uh, you know, Cam endeared himself to their fans uh, while he was in the Big Ten. On the right side, Brian. Brian Hamilton from The Athletic. Uh, Dan, when you look at the way you've constructed your roster this year, last year, the way Purdue's constructed the roster, we go back to you know Kansas, Baylor, Virginia winning titles. What have we learned about what wins, or what should everyone know about what wins to get teams to this level? I mean, I think all of us should just shut up about it and stop trying to help the people that don't know what they're doing. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, you got to be able to score. Obviously, um, you know, to win a six-game uh, a six-game single elimination tournament. Um, you know, I think that the days of of of, of that kind of the, the rock fight style of play um, in, in modern basketball. I think it's going to be tough to win that way. Um, you know, I think obviously balanced roster. Uh, you know. You know, young players with, with talent that are uh, insulated by, you know, returning players to your program with uh, th that could uphold the, the culture and then strategic, you know, portal um, additions that could put you over the top. Um, but I think it's, you know, the, the roster construction, skill, you know, you know, skilled players that can process the game and, uh, you know, and, and balance in terms of veterans and young players. We'll go up front on the right side. Jacob Saliga, Arizona Varsity. Coach Hurley, your team has done a very good job as a whole with your lineup in terms of crashing the glass as a unit. Playing in the Big East, this, uh, going up against guys such as Joel Soriano, uh, Kalkbrenner, Oso Igodoro. How well 
do you, do you think that attacking the glass as a team against those great post players are going to help prepare you to go up against a guy like Edie who controls the post as well as he does? Yeah. Um, you know, he, he's obviously, you know, you, you may coach or play your whole career and never, you know, coach or play against somebody of his stature. Um, you know, tr truly, a, you know, a giant player. So, um, yeah, I mean, we, we're not, you know, we're a pretty physical team, but, you know, we more so fly to the ball. Um, you know, and then I think, well, you know, we're disciplined like they are. I mean, they're, they're an excellent rebounding team. We're an excellent rebounding team. We both block out. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of the time it just comes down to, uh, uh, you know, tracing that ball and, and uh, you know, who, who's, uh, who's going to make that life or death pursuit to get it. Continuing up front. Casey Bartley, Boiler Upload Rivals. Dan, considering the narrative of Purdue getting here for the first time since 69, you guys are getting back. Are there differences between getting here the first time and doing it again? Um, you know, I, I think. Uh, listen, when you when you, you know, when, when you break through that, that euphoria that you feel when um, you know when you when you punch your ticket to the Final Four and just you know the bigness of this event, um, uh, just participating in it for as a as a as a coach or a player. Uh, the experience, um, you know, this setting, uh, you know, the, the, the buses, the police escorts, the 70,000 people in this day. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's an, it's an incredible, um, it's an incredible experience. Um, and it doesn't, uh, you know, uh, the second time you make it feels just as good as the first. Moving over to the left. Second row, second seat. Kyle Tucker with the Athletic. Dan, you've talked. I think you talked in the Big East tournament about needing your Jolly Jolly Green Giant to sort of get nasty. How, how good of a job has he done in this tournament of doing that? And how easy is it to get him in that mindset when the two-time National Player of the Year is on the other side? Yeah. Um, you know, the thing with Donovan is he just uh, he just got he got healthy at the absolute you know right right time of the year, and then you know in, in a similar way. You know, where like, you know, Steph Castle at the end of his freshman year is now probably playing like a sophomore. You know, you, you've got, you know, Donovan now who has enough experience and enough experience in big spots, um, you know, where, where he's perfectly conditioned. Um, he's healthy. He's confident. Um, and, and he's playing more like a junior player. And, um, you know, he understands the challenges. You know that, that he's dealing with. You know with with Zach Eady. It's uh, it's it's just a it's a unique matchup, uh, and he's played against some outstanding centers and Soriano and Kalkbrenner. Um, but this is a different animal, and, um, and 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 they use him in a much much different way. So uh, it's going to be a heck of a challenge for our front court, for our guards, for our whole team, because it's going to have to take a team effort to to try to slow him down a little bit. Second row, Zach. Zach Brazil, the New York Post. Dan, what can you reflect on just what it's like been like to coach your son and what, like, you remember when he was at finishing high school, like, kind of the thought process, like, you know, about, you know, probably, could, you know, obviously his decision to want to play for you, even though he probably knew he wasn't really going to play. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he was good enough to, would have been a, you know, Division two, Division three player. Um, he could dunk. You know, I could never dunk. I got short arms, um, and I couldn't jump that that high. Um, he humanizes me a little bit. I don't know what he does in the locker room when I'm like, when I'm on like a heater and I'm being completely, it's just a complete brutal ass to everybody. Like I don't know if he goes in the locker room and you know endears himself to these guys by crushing me and say, yeah, he's the worst, or if he or if he goes in there and says, yo. Hey guys, he loves you. He just cares. <laughs> I don't really know what's going on back there. Um, I don't know if these guys will tell me either uh, before it's over. But you know, as a coach, you you miss um, you sacrifice a lot, especially at the college level or the NBA level. Um, and oftentimes, your wife and your kids um, you know suffer um, with that time lost. So to be able to get that time back and be together, 11 months a year, and see each other every day, multiple times a day. You know, the highs, the lows of everything we go through um, made up for a lot of time we lost.